Hi, I'm James, and today I am looking again at the Intel Nook. This is the D54250WYK, and this is updated to the latest BIOS revision as of um, February 2014. And what I'm looking at here is how to increase the performance by altering the thermal and TDP limits of the Nook. So first of all, we need to just click through into Advanced. And then from here we go through into performance and this gives us a few different options we see you've got our general settings here and what we can look at now is processor cores by clicking on cores and here you can see you can't adjust the turbo ratios these are locked on the processor but by going into config we can change different states for the chip including here an important value for low voltage Intel chips is the sustained mode power limit. So this is set by default to the maximum TDP of the processor um, and on these chips it's 15 watts. Um, there is also what's known as a burst mode power limit which here you can see allows us to go to 25 watts for 28 seconds so the chip can actually exceed its own TDP for a short amount of time so if you have sort of bursty workloads you can um, go over TDP to get the work done quickly and return to idle. Um, so we're not actually going to make the changes in here but you can make changes permanent so they're applied every boot by doing these settings. Um, but actually what we're going to look at is we're going to enable real-time performance tuning and that allows us to go into Windows and make changes to the system's performance and immediately see the effects using Intel's XTU utility. Also worth noting in here you can set your graphics multiplier which is times on 50 MHz intervals. Uh, by default for HD 5000 it's 20 times um, but you can also increase this up to about 22 or 24 to emulate Irish uh, 5100 graphics as found in sort of the um, Retina MacBook Air 15, uh, yeah, 13 inch, sorry, Retina MacBook Air 13 inch, um, which gives, which allows a little higher clock speed. We're not going to look at this today. We're purely going to look at the effects of increasing the power limits. Okay, so now having booted into Windows, I've started up Cinebench R15. I'm using, going to be using the OpenGL test in this just to demonstrate the performance changes as we change settings and I've also loaded up Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility also known as XTU. Uh, with this we can control the settings for the processor and the graphics core in the chip and we can also use it to monitor what's happening while we run the test. Um, so here we have a stock run with all the standard settings so the chip using 15 watts, a 25 watts uh, short term power increase, 28 seconds for the short term power window and 32 amp maximum current usage. Um, so if we reduce this down to just show the monitor and now run the OpenGL test. So here this goes through a set of uh, basically an OpenGL performance test, um, mainly graphics workload on this. If we look down in the bottom right as well, we can see we are monitoring the TDP for the total draw of the processor, including the cores and the graphics here. You'll notice that they don't add up the IA core and graphics TDP to the total for the chip because that doesn't include in those two at the bottom, memory usage and cache. Those are separate but are counted in the CPU total. And here we can see, despite this being a 15 watt TDP chip running at stock settings, we are going over the TDP and that's now dropped down, having come out of the 28 second window and will now for the rest of the test sit at 15 watts. What this means is that for short workloads um, you get an inflated result. Um, whereas if you're in, say, a game, after a short time you'd be pegged to 15 watts. Um, so this means the test will actually score a little higher than you might expect um, versus sort of performance you'd see in a long scenario like gameplay. 
so that's come out at 26.87 if we show all and reduce the turbo boost short power max down to match the main turbo limit of 15 and rerun the test and this time around we should see no more than 15 watts CPU total TDP down here in the bottom corner. We can also see that while the clock speed for the graphics are limited to 1 gigahertz at the moment, actually in reality we rarely see them going past sort of save 7 800 megahertz um, simply because the power isn't available to reach the full 1 gigahertz clock speed. It went there for a very brief moment, but if you see sort of the trace down the bottom it tends to be quite a lot lower than that. And this time throughout the test we're pegged to 15 watts the whole way. And as the test just comes to an end we'll see what result we get. It won't be drastically different but it should have dropped down a little. And there we see we've lost about one and a half frames per second um, but this gives you well sorry about one frame per second that gives you a more realistic expectation of the performance of the chip in sort of sustained workloads. So now we're going to increase this up to 30 watts for the turbo boost power max and also allow a little higher processor current limit and increase that up to 40 amps because the chip runs at close to one volt under load um, 32 amps would start to run into a few limiting factors there. Um, it's easiest just to increase it. It still won't go above 30 watts but it just means we're not running into any limitations with it. And if we drop this back down to monitoring having applied <clears throat> and this time you won't actually see the chip using 30 watts. Um, simply it seems to not quite go up to that all the time but you will see that graphics frequencies are consistently a lot higher now. The chip's using about 26 watts. We also tend to see slightly higher processor speeds, um, although again CPU power consumption isn't particularly high in this test. Um, you'd see more benefit in something that puts combined CPU and GPU workload from the higher TDPs um, as you gain CPU and GPU performance from them. But as the test draws to a close, what we can see here now is frame rates have gone up to 31.44 frames per second. So we're looking at around a 20% performance increase. Obviously, this isn't incredible because we've gone from 15 watts to 30 watts and we're only seeing an additional 20% of performance. But if you have a game title that you want to run on the Nook and it's sort of borderline playable, this might just give you that bit of performance increase that you need. Um, the flip side, however, and I can just cu cut in a couple video clips here, is we get quite a large increase in noise levels. Um, first of all, what I have here is the Nook running at stock, running 3D Mark, and we have uh, a noise meter running and you can see it's coming in about 42 dB and then here we have it running at 30 watts running 3D mark again having run for a few minutes in the test and we're seeing over 50 decibels uh, so quite a large increase in noise um, so not ideal if you're in sort of a situation where you want a low noise unit something a bit larger than the nook with a bit more performance might be preferable i hope you found this video useful be sure to check out our channel for more on the intel d5 4250wyk fourth generation nook including a general overview of the system and also motherboard and cooler removal useful in helping to upgrade the cooling capacity of the unit we did this before our testing today it's well worth a look um, we also have some HD 5000 game testing to see how different games perform on the Nook as well. Thanks for watching.